How you guys? Still actually December 22nd. That's why my outfit's the same and the room is still decorated in Christmas stuff. Um, so this is a little bit of a longer lesson because it's involving systems of inequalities. It's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. I might have to stop it a couple of times and break it up into a couple of videos. There are many situations that arrive in business and engineering that necessitate systems of linear inequalities. The region in the XY plane that solves this system often represent all of the viable solutions to the system. So being able to visualize this region can be extremely helpful. As always with modeling, it's important to really read the problem and understand the physical quantities involved. All right, so exercise number one, John mows yards for his father's landscaping business for $10 per hour and also works at a bakery for $15 an hour. He can work at most 52 hours per week during the summer. He needs to make at least $600 per week to cover his living expenses. If John works 14 hours mowing and 30 hours at the bakery, does that satisfy all of the problem's constraints? Okay, well, let's see. Fourteen hours mowing. Fourteen hours mowing times how much does he get paid to mow? Ten dollars plus thirty hours at fifteen dollars an hour for working at the bakery. That's one forty. That's four fifty. That's five ninety. That's supposed to make at least $600. Does it? No. So does that satisfy all of the constraints? No. He is within the hour. The hours is 44. That's less than 52. That's okay. The problem is that he's not making the dollar amount that he wants to make. If X represents the hours John spends mowing and Y represents the hours he spends at the bakery, Write a system of inequalities that describes this scenario. Okay, so this is a little bit harder because they tell us specifically X is the mowing, Y is the um, bakery. I usually like to use the letters, but we're going to have to eventually graph this, so that's why they did it. X represents the hours mowing. So I'm going to write it up here because I'm going to go have to push this up anyway. Mowing plus bakery hours alone has to be less than or equal to 52. You can't work any more than 52 hours. As for, far as the dollar amount, $10 mowing, $15 at the bakery, and he wants that to be greater than or equal to $600. Part C says, if John must work a minimum of 10 hours for his father, will be able to make enough to cover his living expenses. Show the work that leads to your answer. So all we have to do, this part we don't have to worry about right now. We have to see if it's going to, if that's gonna work. I'm gonna pause it and then I will come back and show you. All right, so I get Y is greater than or equal to 33 and a third. So yes, he'll be able to work 33 and a third hours at the bakery and that will give him $600, but he'll still be under his 52-hour limit because 30, 33 plus 10 is 43, okay? Now on part B, that's where the fun starts. It says, okay, now take your equations and graph them. Well, in order for us to graph them, they have to um, be in y equals mx plus b form. So that's step one. Step one is I'm going to change my equation so that the y's are by themselves. That's easy with the first one, not as easy with the second one. Um, but what I'm going to do in an effort to save us some time is I'm just going to tell you what they are. So the first equation is going to be y is less than or equal to negative x plus 52. And the second equation, you do not have to divide by a negative. So when I change it, it'll be y is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 40. <clears throat> okay, your grapher is of help to you here because you're not going to be able to graph every single point. So what you're going to do is you're going to use your grapher to create a table that's going to help you with what you're going to graph. The X, remember, was our mowing. So this is going to be our mowing hours. And then this is going to be our bakery hours.
when I chose to graph it, I chose to count by um, fives across the bottom, zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Up the side, I chose to count by eights, eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, that's high enough. Then what I did is I went to my grapher and I pulled a table of values for each of these because I found it easiest. So zero is 52, and then I just picked these points. So then I read in the table, what is 10? 10 was 42. What is 20? 20 is 32. 30 was 22. 40 was 12. And 50 was two, so that I could graph that as best I can, not perfect. Zero, 52, 10, 42, 20, 32, 30, 22, 40, 12, 50 is two. Um, that's a solid line. And it's Y is less than, so I'm gonna shade underneath it. Okay, then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna graph the other one and I'm gonna do it in a different color. I hope you can see this color, but I'm gonna do it in a different color. Again, I picked the same points to work with. I picked zero and 40, 10 is 33 and a third, 15 was 30. I looked for nice numbers that I was able to approximate. 20 is 26 and two thirds. 25 is 23 and one third. 30 is 20. 40 is 13 and one third. 50 is six and two thirds. That's probably Mrs. Castrocone. She's gonna have to wait a minute. Zero to 40. 10 is 33 and a third. 15 is 30, 20 is 26 and a third, 25 is 23 and a third, 30 is 20, 40 is 13, which is over that, and then 50 is 6. So it kind of crosses. My line's not going to be perfect here, but you'll get the idea here. Again, solid. Um, but this time it's shade above because it's Y is greater than. Whereas the overlap area, overlap area is right inside this triangle here. Um, John's father needs him to work at the landscaping business. Show the point on the graph that corresponds to the greatest number of hours that he can work while still covering his expenses. That would be right here. Wow, well, it's close to right here. The greatest amount would be mowing is down here. So it'll be right about there. And the thing that's going to get him the most money is 36. And... 16. Algebraically find the greatest number of hours that he can work. So you're going to take our two original equations, not these two, take our two original equations. And what I did was use elimination and that will show you the answer as well. Okay. Um, there's a second example, but this is going to make the video mega super long. So what I'm probably going to do is shut it off. Actually, let me just show you. I'll just show you. You can see my system that I wrote. You can see me change them, get the Y's by themselves. Then I went to my table and I picked some points that I thought I could easily graph. And then I went and I graphed it. I know I keep sliding over. Sorry. All right, you guys. Um, I know it says that we're supposed to do those three problems tonight, but I think what I'm going to have you do is do the three problems that are homework for tomorrow and submit those. I do not need to see these because I went over the answers with you.
Okay. Um, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.